Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, my name is Elon Mendel. I'm an associate at Shipkovich uh, Law Firm. I uh, am here today to discuss the recent events with PFG Best, uh, and hopefully this will be an, an instructive webinar for, for everyone. If there are any questions um, along the way, please uh, feel free to ask, and uh, I, will, I will try to address them as we go on. So as a matter of background, um, it's helpful to know who exactly PFG Best was. Uh, PFG Best was an FCM, uh, one of 126 uh, CFTC registered FCMs uh, in the country. It was a mid-sized firm uh, with about $440 million in customer equity uh, that, uh, at least on paper. It, it turns out, uh, we found out on Monday that there isn't as much uh, that PFG Best was holding after all. It was founded in 1990 um, and has a number of subsidiaries that are also uh, CFTC registered, uh, primarily a, a commodity pool operator and a commodities trading uh, advisor. So what happened on Monday uh, was that the CEO of the company uh, attempted suicide. And in the suicide note, uh, it became clear that there may be some accounting irregularities uh, associated with the firm. Uh, that same day, PFG Best notified its clients that uh, a hold was placed on, on client accounts um, and that they had an intention to liquidate operations and warned its employees that their jobs may be uh, in danger. That same night, uh, the NFA instituted an emergency action and prohibited uh, PFG Best from entering any more trades uh, for their customers. It limited all actions from then on uh, solely to liquidate existing positions. Um, now, this was a little bit different from what had happened with MF Global, uh, which we'll get to a little bit later, um, where in MF Global, no one was allowed to trade anything. Uh, at least here, customers were able to, liquid, to liquidate their positions and, and mitigate some of their losses. Um, it, it comes out later uh, that on Tuesday, uh, that ability to mitigate really didn't make much of a difference because their clearing house, uh, which was Jeffrey's, ended up uh, making a margin call and uh, liquidated all customer positions anyway. So let's talk a little bit about exactly what sort of regulators and what sort of regulations are in place so that we have an, uh, somewhat of an idea of what's going to happen in the future. So there are two primary regulators uh, for FCMs in the U.S. Uh, the governmental regulator is the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, uh, which is a governmental agency that's charged with policing the futures industry. And then there's the National Futures Association, which is a not-for-profit uh, private membership organization uh, that performs a self-regulatory function for its member FCMs. Um, a third type of regulator is uh, the exchanges, which also perform a similar function to the NFA. Um, in this case, the um, the NFA was involved rather than the exchanges because uh, PFG Best was not a uh, a clearing FCM. It was uh, a non-clearing FCM that used other clearing FCMs. To, to clear its trades. Uh, so in light of MF Global, the CFTC performed a, an examination of all FCMs back in February of 2012. Uh, during that investigation, uh, they didn't find any irregularities uh, in the information that was provided. The NSA has also performed audits in the past uh, few years and had not found uh, irregularities um, or, or the, the fact that uh, so much money was missing from customer segregated accounts. Now, one of the reasons that it was a little bit difficult in, in PFG's scenario to find out um, that the money was missing is that uh, up until recently, the NFA was using um, a paper method for confirming bank balances against what the FCMs were reporting. Uh, so they would mail uh, a request to the bank, 
and the bank would respond with a, a confirmation of the bank balances. What had happened in this case was that the uh, address that was provided to the NFA for uh, correspondence with the bank was actually a PO box that was controlled by uh, by the CEO of PFG Best, and so he ended up falsifying records and sending back falsified account statements to the NFA, which then thought that uh, the bank balances matched whatever PFG Best was reporting. Uh, most recently, and what sort of brought this all to uh, to a close was the fact that the NFA was moving to an electronic confirmation method, um, and as soon as that were to happen, U.S. Bank, which is where uh, the money was being held, um, would be able to tell the NFA uh, the real balance without uh, the CEO of the company being able to interfere with that. Um, so what ended up happening was that the CFTC filed a uh, complaint this week uh, against PFG Best and its, com and its CEO uh, along the same time that the NFA uh, instituted an emergency member responsibility action and uh, froze PFG Best from being able to, to do anything until the, uh, the CFTC and NFA uh, actions were resolved. In the complaint, uh, there were a number of allegations that the CFTC brought against PFG Best. Um, I'll just go through them quickly. Uh, they were misappropriation of the customer funds, uh, which it seems to be a little bit more than $200 million that's missing uh, from, from the customer accounts. Uh, there were false statements made to the CFTC uh, by the, the company and its CEO. And failure to segregate client funds was the, uh, the last claim uh, that was made by the CFTC. Uh, to answer uh, a couple of questions that have just come in, uh, it doesn't seem that this is similar to NF Global in that um, in NF Global situation, the company was using customer funds to uh, mitigate losses in other areas of the company uh, due to economic downfall. Um, in this case, it, there doesn't seem to be um, any application of those customer funds to any losses that PFG Best had sustained. Uh, since it is so early in the investigation, uh, it's not entirely clear where, the, where that money has gone. So that's going to be something that will unravel as uh, this plays out. Now, there are a few similarities uh, and a, a few differences between what happened here and what happened with MF Global. Um, MF Global was obviously a much larger case um, and involved not only futures uh, accounts, but also involved securities accounts. Um, it also involved a bankruptcy process, which PFG Best, uh, just a few days ago, filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy protection in, in Chicago. So that will become an issue uh, that we'll go through in, in a second. Um, th there are some major differences, though. Um, in MF Global, the uh, there was a total freezing of all accounts, and so no one was able to liquidate their positions or, or in any way uh, mitigate their losses since they were a duly registered uh, FCM and broker dealer. There was also uh, the possibility for its securities accounts to take advantage of an insurance fund, which is known as CIPIC. Um, while futures customers, even in the F in uh, MF Global, were not given access to the insurance protection of CIPIC, um, the benefit that futures customers had there was that the customers who did receive insurance payments from CIPIC uh, weren't able to then collect a second time from the pool of funds that everyone shared. So uh, the futures customers weren't sharing uh, their recovery with securities customers that were already uh, compensated. Uh, the, the next difference is that MF Global uh, was a Chapter 11 reorganization, so it was uh, attempting to continue to do business uh, rather than PFG Best filed for a liquidation bankruptcy. So uh, they will be winding up their affairs 
Um, and I'll explain uh, the Chapter 7 process in a second so that everyone has an idea of what will happen going forward. Um, most recently, it seems that uh, customer claims for PFG Best customers are, are trading at about 22 cents uh, on the dollar, which is significantly lower than uh, the 70 cents on the dollar that MFG Global claims uh, were getting. Um, in a second, I'll, I'll explain exactly what the claims trading process is like, and, and it's a useful way for customers that are trying to just close out the matter and uh, and get back what they what they can get back today, rather than waiting for an expected return later uh, to be able to to sell their claim to someone else. Now, in terms of customer segregation. Um, there's a difference between uh, the way that futures accounts and forex accounts are treated, even with the same company. Uh, all futures accounts uh, have to be kept in segregated funds for any positions uh, that are being margined. So those accounts have to be kept separate from the funds of the FCM. When it comes to forex accounts, um, those Funds that are being used to margin forex positions do not have to be kept separate uh, from the FCM or the RFED. And the difference there uh, was that for forex accounts, the, the CFTC decided that it's better to raise the capital requirement uh, for those funds for those accounts, um, so that there would be more freedom to use uh, customer collateral for for margin. Um, rather than in futures accounts where um, those funds are, are segregated. Um, now, in this case, uh, what happened was that the funds were supposedly being segregated, um, except that there was no easy way for regulators to confirm uh, directly from the bank rather than going to the FCM. Uh, about whether that money is actually there. Uh, what happened recently was that a CFTC commissioner, Commissioner O'Malia, uh, called an emergency meeting of the uh, Technology Advisory Committee of the, of the commission to figure out how to fix that uh, and see if there are ways that the regulators can get access to bank information uh, more quickly and without involving um, the FCM uh, to verify or, or even give permission to verify those funds. Um, the NFA has also been pretty active in trying to create new regulations to avoid what happened with MF Global. Uh, most recently, the NFA had proposed what is called the Corzine Rule, um, which would require the, the CEO or other executives of an FCM to approve any withdrawal of segregated funds over um, the over 25% of the excess funds in the segregated account. Um, excess funds in a segregated account are funds that are not currently being used uh, to margin any uh, positions, but are still in the segregated account uh, nonetheless. So uh, what that does is creates um, additional liability uh, for these executives to make sure that those funds are being used appropriately. Um, so just uh, as a basic overview of what the regulations are um, in this space, um, in the futures arena, we have what are called uh, Section 4D accounts. These are segregated accounts that are required by Section 4D of the Commodity Exchange Act. In the Forex space, um, there are no segregation requirements. Uh, rather, the CFTC uh, has imposed a $20 million net capital requirement on retail foreign exchange dealers to uh, mitigate any uh, chances uh, that customers would, would have losses due to a failure. Um, the, the net minimum capital requirement for FCMs that aren't retail foreign exchange dealers is significantly lower. Now, in other areas um, of the finance space, their uh, insurance programs are not something that are new. Uh, for instance, in banking, uh, FDIC insurance provides 
insurance up to $250,000 for anyone who puts their money in an insured account. And pretty much anyone who puts their money in a, a checking or savings account in this country uh, is afforded the protection of, of FDIC insurance. Uh, similarly, for securities investors, uh, there is what's called Securities Investor Protection Corporation Insurance or CIPIC insurance, um, which offers protections to securities accounts um, if the broker dealer uh, was to liquidate. Um, that same insurance does not apply to futures customers, uh, let alone to Forex customers, uh, because the futures industry doesn't have uh, an insurance program in place. And one of the reasons that that program isn't available or why there are opponents to putting such a program in place is that the cost of a program like that is uh, very expensive. And uh, up until recently, there were very few FCMs that have failed. Um, so some other um, alternatives that people have suggested is uh, moving the segregated account from the FCM overall and putting it in the hands of a third party that uh, doesn't have any, uh, that shouldn't have any reason to use that money. And so uh, it makes it easier for regulators to find out if those funds are where they're supposed to be, and uh, it takes the money away from anyone who might have an interest in using it. Um, so we went through this slide already. The next question is, so what happens after this? Um, the issue is a little bit complicated by the fact that PFG Best has filed a bankruptcy uh, petition in Chicago, and the bankruptcy stay will uh, impact what uh, process will, will unfold after this. So uh, there are a number of, of possibilities. Um, the first is that uh, since these segregated customer accounts are entitled to special treatment, um, these accounts are most likely going to be bulk transferred to other FCMs uh, so that customers can resume trading. Uh, now, in this case, the bulk transfer is a little less important um, only for the fact that the clearing uh, firm that PFG Best used has already liquidated all the positions in these accounts because uh, of a margin call that was issued on Tuesday. Um, the customers with futures accounts will get um, first uh, right of recovery against the segregated customer account. Uh, so all of those funds will not be shared by general uh, unsecured creditors. Um, once the, the bankruptcy court uh, has allowed the the customer funds to be unfrozen um, the a trustee will be appointed uh, and and or rather a trustee was already appointed and we're waiting for the trustee to get up to speed to figure out exactly how claims will be handled going forward um, in a typical bankruptcy scenario the court will set a date uh, by which any creditor needs to inform the court that it's making a claim against the, the assets of the company. Uh, it's very important for any customer that has experienced losses uh, in the PFG best case to uh, file a, a proof of claim uh, on time with the court so that they can get as much money back as, uh, as is available for them. Um, because there are uh, less funds in the segregated account, uh, than expected, and because Forex customers don't have any access to the segregated funds, um, Forex customers uh, will be general unsecured creditors in, in the bankruptcy case, and um, for any losses that um, that are uncovered by the segregated funds um, will also be general unsecured. So once the the company is liquidated and uh, the trustee receives all the assets for distribution, um, every claim, every customer will get a proportional amount of money um, after administrative expenses for the case have been paid. 
Um, now, to answer a few questions that have come in, um, in terms of a timeline, it's very difficult to uh, to guess right now how long things are going to take. Bankruptcy court is uh, very used to moving very quickly, especially in cases um, where money can be can be dissipated. Um, in this case, since the the um, the positions have already been liquidated, some of the urgency has been taken out of uh, out of the matter. Uh, but the bankruptcy court should be moving pretty quickly to at least um, get a preliminary distribution back to to customers, so that uh, that those funds can be reinvested uh, or uh, or used elsewhere. Um, the other issue that's at stake is that the trustee who is responsible for bringing money into into the estate um, will likely have claims against the CEO and some other people that have received um, money from PFG Best, um, which will then be used, uh, if those claims are successful, to repay customers um, that have experienced losses. Uh, as part of the lawsuit that the CFTC uh, has filed against PFG Best and the CEO, um, it will likely also seek um, damages to to make customers whole. So um, that will be used if any money is recovered to compensate customers for their losses. Um, now, in terms of of customer protection in in the U.S. Um, the segregated accounts have functioned uh, to protect customers for a very long time. Um, up until recently, there have been very few cases in which customers lost money because an FCM uh, has gone bankrupt. I think what will happen here is that regulators will take a, a much closer look at, uh, at creating stronger protections for customer funds um, now that it's uh, becoming more clear that Additional protections are are, are necessary uh, since this is the the second time um, in less than a year that an FCM has failed. Um, so now is the point where um, I will take any questions. Uh, one question that has just come up is, what's the best way to to safeguard? Um, yourselves as customers who may have experienced losses. So um, the first way to to receive as much money as possible from um, from the bankruptcy is to file a proof of claim. Um, what will be required for a proof of claim uh, is a, a form that's available on the bankruptcy court's website. Um, that needs to be filled out by each customer, stating exactly how much money uh, that customer feels they're entitled to. Um, once that form is filled out and the the deadline for for filing all of those claims has passed, the court will decide how much money uh, needs to go back to uh, to each customer. Um, if you need more information about that process, um, feel free to, to contact me or feel free to contact the, the trustee um, that's in charge of liquidating the assets and making the distributions to customers. Um, and that that information can be found on, um, on the court's website. The second way of getting money back from this case, um, which will be significantly less most likely than what you'll be able to to get um, through the bankruptcy process is to sell your claim uh, to a uh, a claim buyer. Uh, as I mentioned before, these claims are currently selling for about twenty to twenty five cents on the dollar. Uh, but what that means is you'll be guaranteed uh, to receive that money up front, and uh, if there are any later distributions, uh, you will no longer be entitled uh, to receiving those distributions later on. Um, in terms of going forward, what do we do 
um, to make sure that our, our money is protected. The, the best way to go at this point is to use an FCM um, uh, for futures accounts that um, that looks sound on on the financials. Uh, and what you can do is go to the CFTC's website, uh, which on a monthly basis will show you how much customer equity and how much in assets each FCM has um, in order to to make that analysis. Uh, I would also suggest contacting the the NFA or the CFTC to let them know your opinion that. Um, that customer protections should be increased. Uh, without uh, hearing from the public, it it's not uh, it may not be as quick uh, for these protections to be put in place. Um, in terms of the amount that's owed to the client, um, the the amount that's owed to the client is. Um, Definitely going to be the account balance now that the liquidations um, have been made. Um, but you can also make an argument in your proof of claim uh, that you're entitled to what the the equity would have been had the margin call been met. Um, so it would be a good idea to um, to pick the, the largest number that you can arguably be entitled to, and that way the the court can decide later on, uh, and the trustee can uh, can evaluate that claim and see how much. At the end of the day, the court will decide how much each customer is entitled to. Um, in terms of uh, which country has the best customer protection in case of a bank's bankruptcy, uh, first of all, we're, we're dealing here with an FCM bankruptcy, uh, and not every uh, country that I'm aware of has has protections uh, for for those accounts. Uh, I'm also not uh, very well versed in the laws of other other countries. So it would most likely be best for anyone who's interested in, in going abroad to speak with attorneys um, in jurisdictions that they're looking to enter. Uh, in terms of filing a proof of claim today, uh, that isn't quite possible yet. Um, since the, the case is brand new, um, a trustee was appointed the other day. Um, that trustee is currently in the in the process of being replaced with someone else. So what will happen is that trustee will um, get up to speed. There will be what's called a Section 341 meeting of creditors. Uh, and during that meeting, uh, members of PFG Best will be interviewed to figure out exactly what happened and where um, assets are located. Um, after that, at some point, the court will um, will decide on a bar date for, for proofs of claim. And so once the, the court has issued an order stating that customers are allowed to start filing proofs of claim, uh, that's when those proofs of claim should be submitted. Um, with the Emma Global case, we did see some interim distributions already, um, and it's only been nine months since uh, the case has started. So I do think that there will be most likely some um, intermediate distributions um, in the near future, hopefully within six months of, of the case filing, um, at least uh, at a minimum to get some of the account balances uh, back. I don't think that this case will will close within six months or that everyone will get everything they're entitled to back within six months. There's just too much up in the air right now and not enough information uh, to be able to predict how long these this case will take. Um, in order to figure out uh, for your Forex account if um, there are open trades uh, and when those will be closed, it's best to uh, contact PFG Best or the NFA. Um, they'll have more information on uh, the, the liquidation process for Forex accounts. Uh, the the NFA should have um, more information by calling 
their general hotline, they'll be able to put you in touch uh, with someone who will be able to help you. The website to get information uh, from the NFA is nfa.futures.org. I have not spoken to the NFA yet. Um, again, this, this case is only a few days old, and so there isn't very much information um, that is available yet. Uh, the NFA has set up a dedicated website uh, for clients of PFG Best to get more information, uh, and I urge everyone uh, that's here to to view that site and and try to get as much information as uh, as possible. The NFA is somewhat uh, short staffed on answering phones because, as you can imagine, they uh, they are getting a lot of phone calls uh, right now because of this uh, situation. Uh, they do answer their calls pretty quickly, though, uh, so if, if you do call them, I, I don't think that there will be an issue with getting through to someone. Um, and so if there are any other questions, um, I'll, I'll take them now. Otherwise, feel free uh, to either call or email me with other questions. My email address is emendel at shipkovich.com. That's E-M-E-N-D-E-L at shiftybitch.com. Yes, yeah, so to repeat, um, for Forex account holders, the best thing to do right now is to get in touch with uh, the NFA or the uh, trustee in the bankruptcy um, because in the end, they will have to collaborate to, to get those accounts either liquidated or transferred. Uh, to another party, and these trustees don't always know um, that Forex accounts are treated differently from futures accounts. Um, so as much information as, as customers can give to the trustee, I, I'm sure uh, things will go a lot more smoothly, uh, and also the NFA, I'm sure, will be very heavily involved um, in, in this case uh, to, to guide the trustee uh, to treat the account appropriately. So those are the two parties that I would suggest getting in contact with, the NFA and uh, the bankruptcy trustee. The information on the bankruptcy trustee can be uh, found on the bankruptcy court's website. Uh, and I will try to pull that up right now. Oh, it seems I can't, I can't pull it up right now, but, um, I will, if anyone wants to contact me, I, I will, uh, forward that information, uh, to anyone who sends me an email. All right. And so if there are any more uh, if there are no more questions, I thank everyone for coming to the, this webinar. I hope you found it uh, informative. And uh, as soon as we have any more information, I'm sure that FX Street will will help uh, all of all of you guys uh, to find out uh, the information as it comes out. And if uh, anyone has any other questions, feel free to to contact me, um, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer whatever questions uh, you might have.